Well, we got the buck loaded, and I just wanted to say a little something. Today is November 11th, and it's a very special day. It's the day that we remember our fallen heroes and our heroes that are still alive. We will never forget the things they have done to protect Canada and North America, and uh, they're a very special group of people. So remember that and never forget. is brought to you by out here looking for uh, mule deer and lo and behold we find some elk and there's a bull in there and I got a tag so I'm going in. So, <laughs> we didn't have far to walk in, but when you leave the animal's line of sight and you can't see it, then you hook around and you come back in. There was one corner and I, I thought he was behind that corner, and then I thought he was behind the next corner, but he was on the other side of the fence over there. And I walked in and noticed the bull sitting out in the open, so I got all, I got my bearings wrong and uh, screwed up. Baba Booey. Stay tuned for more What's Got to Come. 
unless it's Ken's episode, then you might as well turn the channel. Hey now everybody, I'm Jason Acorn. Today I want to talk about the heat vein. It's a low profile vein of only 0.41 of an inch high, which allows you for better clearance under your sight for long distance shots. They've developed a plastic that is more rigid but lighter, so they have retained the six grain weight like the blazer vein and they've introduced it into the heat vein which works just so wonderful so when you're comparing it to the blazer vein it's about half an inch lower profile but also half an inch longer same surface area same weight just more rigid and super deadly i'll be using these on my killing sticks this year uh, regardless if it's hunting or uh, target and I'm telling you, so far they fly flawless, tight groups, uh, extremely accurate. These heat veins help my arrow, my killing stick arrow, cut through the wind and helps pass through my prey. Well, hello there. It is October 1st and I was lucky enough to acquire my mule deer draw here in Alberta. So, uh, seeing that it's the first, I decided I better head out and uh, see if I can get a specific buck down on the ground. I've got quite a bit of land here that I've uh, got permission on, but it's all good. I've got my weather bee and I sighted in my new loophole scope, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, it's sort of different for me. I don't think I've hunted uh, opening day rifle in a long time and there are hunters everywhere. So it's something I got to get used to, but so I love mule deer hunting and it's going to be a little different with the rifle. Uh, I have a little farther reach, uh, sort of speaking. So yeah, I'm going to go for a walk because that's what I do and it seems like everybody else wants to drive around so I'm gonna walk around there's a lake over here I've been in here before so I'm gonna take a uh, walk over there peer over the edge do some glassing and we'll see what we see <laughs> today and uh, man it is unbelievable the amount of orange vests that are out here pushing bush just in cars like it's amazing so anyways I got this this pea field all to myself this is one of the places where my buck has been hanging out so I'm just sitting on the edge on a on a knoll and uh, he might come out. I could get her done one day. That'd be awesome. Grandma needs a new set of snow tires. <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be a better day. I'm heading back down south and hopefully I'll be there by myself because that's what I want and need. So good night everybody. I was just trying to get some footage of this huge mule deer uh, skylighted and going over the ridge and then a gunshot from my side and then I noticed there's a truck over there and there's people in here but they're exactly where I was told to go and this place is a little out of the way so I had to drive a little farther and it's bunk. I really wish I would have got footage of that mule deer though. He was a beauty. This gigantic turd. Well, 
it's a freaking mi miracle. I'm in a spot and there's nobody here. I walked that valley and there is like a highway down below that's not supposed to be there. So everybody and their cousin and sisters, brothers, aunts and uncles are driving down there and scaring everything out. So I have drove all day. Yesterday I drove all day and glassed. I got home, my eyes were so puffy and sore from staring through binos and driving and all that that I had a head headache. So it's three o'clock November 2nd and it's supposed to get steadily warmer throughout the week. I'm gonna stay tomorrow. I gotta go home for a day and then I'm gonna come back but um, my secret weapon, my buddy that lives out here, my good friend, keeps uh, sending me uh, names and phone numbers, so that's all I can do. If you're ever wanting to ask Jason or Calvin a question, check out their Facebook or Twitter page at Adding Bones. wanted a giant you know but if I could get him with my bow solo that'd be my third year in a row and that that means a little more to me than than anything else This ridge runs right through the uh, the big vast area that I have to hunt. I'm the only one in here. My problem is I've seen three bucks and they're not near as big as I was hoping for. Well, Lord living, you know the rest. Well, the recap, last night, whoa, I'm turning on my CD player here. Uh, last night, that buck came out. 
Um, I tried to get some footage, but it was way too dark. He, he's a smart bugger. He came out about 15 minutes after legal light, and it was about 350 yards. So I w got in there this morning, and I had that bugger at like 60 yards. I had my th my Weatherby 300 mag, and it was about 10, 15 minutes too early, and I had to let him walk. It was I couldn't see him in the camera. It's too early legally, um, but. He is killable. So my good friend Brad Guile is off today and I'm just waiting for him and we're gonna cruise around. I got a new spot here. Wish me luck. Got some pretty weak forks. That's the first buck that I could actually drill. He's a 350. Oh, I want it to end. I, I want success, but it's got a bit of a harem happening. I've never seen a more beautiful mule deer buck. He's so white in the face, just gorgeous but he has some growing to do, unfortunately. This segment is brought to you by Cam Clark Ford, located on the west side of Gasoline Alley, Red Deer, Alberta. Look at this, <laughs> totally unique looking buck, I, I can't believe it. Another hard fought, miles walked, lots of early mornings, lots of late nights and uh, thanks to my good friend Brad Guile, 
I finally got her done, man. I was like on my last couple days. It's not cheap hunting big old mule deer. Well, the way I hunt them anyways. Boy, I, I couldn't be happier with this guy. I've never seen a buck like this in the wild. He is just so unique. He's got a little flyer. He's just so palmated. I have no idea how old he is. I, I thought that he was really old, but he might not be, but he's definitely a mature buck. And that's what I look for every single time. Uh, I had dreams of a 200. I had dreams of a 180. But this is my buck this year, and I wouldn't change him for anything. He's going to look awesome on my wall, and he's going to be great food in my chili. I don't know. I think I've been successful five years in a row now here in Alberta. Uh, the last three or four years have all been with a bow. Uh, I tried my hardest. I probably walked 40 miles with my rifle and my bow, countless coolies. But the old Weatherby 300 mag and the uh, VX6 loophole scope, man, what a combination. Just a, a beautiful rifle setup. So thank you for watching the Boneyard. You know Calvin and I really appreciate it. And we're just doing what we love, bringing you our hunts as it happens. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. Until next year on my next mule deer hunt. Well everybody, I just, uh, you've seen Brad on the show before, but he definitely is the muley whisperer. And uh, thanks so much, my friend. Problem. What a fun time. He worked his ass off for me and uh, I really appreciate it my friend. Until next time, here on the Boneyard. <laughs>